What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Stefan here from App Stuff, and I'm here to show you guys how to set up a Firebase project for your iOS app. So before we dive into that, let's just talk a little bit about what Firebase is. This is a backend server that is run and operated by Google, guys. So it's going to allow you to do a bunch of stuff that your app is gonna need, like authenticating users, storing information in a database, storing large files like images and videos in a storage bucket, and Google provides us with a really easy to use and easy to set up API that makes communicating with the Firebase backend easier than ever before with querying data, uploading information, and all of that stuff. So let's go ahead and get started with how to add Firebase to a project here. I'm gonna be doing this for this TikTok clone that I am currently building, and I'm sure you guys already have an Xcode project set up that you want to connect Firebase to, but if you don't, make sure you just go ahead and get your Xcode project opened up so that we can get started with the Firebase setup and integration. All right, guys, so you're gonna head over to console.firebase.google.com, and you'll just need to be signed in with a Google account, and this is your dashboard, right? It displays some recent projects that you've created, if any, and it gives you the ability to add a Firebase project or set one up. So what we're gonna do is click on this Add Project guy, and we are gonna name our project. So this is for the TikTok tutorial, and we're gonna hit Continue. And guys, you can add analytics if you would like, but we are not gonna do so for the purposes of this. Uh, but essentially, it just gives you the ability to add analytics to your application, monitor how long users are spending on certain pages, when they click certain things, when crashes happen, and stuff like that. So if you want analytics in your app, you can enable that. But Firebase Analytics is a whole nother thing in and of itself. So right now, just go ahead and let Firebase do its thing and create your project. And once that's done, we're gonna go over how to add and set up this project and link it to our iOS app. So I'm gonna hit continue and it should take me to my project dashboard. All right, so this is awesome. All right, so first thing we're gonna do guys is go to get started by adding Firebase to your app and we're gonna select iOS here. So you guys notice that you can also do this, oop, let me go back, for Android and web, so this can, operate as a backend for multiple platforms here. Uh, we are gonna be just doing the iOS setup though. So guys, you are gonna need your Apple bundle ID. So this is the bundle identifier for your mobile application. So what I'm gonna do is go into our Xcode project here and find this. So guys, you just go up to the top in your project directory, click your project name with that little app, icon, app store icon next to it, and you should be in your target right here and in the general tab. And then you should see your bundle identifier here. Just click the arrow next to that. And I highly recommend copy and pasting it, guys. You really don't wanna accidentally misspell that and have a mismatch between your bundle identifier in Firebase and your bundle identifier in Xcode. It could cause problems later on down the line. So I always copy and paste directly. And let's go ahead and hit register app. So that's gonna register our application. Next up, guys, we need to download this Google service-info.plist file. So this is like a configuration file. So let's go ahead and click on that and it's gonna go right to our downloads folder. And this basically contains all of the information and that we need to communicate with our Firebase server. API keys, client IDs, project names, stuff like that. So guys, I'm gonna just go to my downloads folder and we can actually do that a little later. Okay, no, let's go ahead and do it now. Go to your downloads folder, guys, and let's go back and get our Xcode project opened up. And we are just gonna take that Google service info.plist file and drag it right into our project. And make sure you guys have copy items if needed selected and hit finish, right? So you can go to this Google service info plist file and that is going to contain all of your uh, Firebase project information. You definitely wanna keep that file private and you don't wanna share that with people because it could leave you vulnerable to attacks on your database if people can get access to your API keys and stuff like that. So be careful with that file, guys. Okay, so next up, we need to actually install Firebase as a Swift package. So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this, but for those of you that aren't, 
we have a bunch of code that Firebase has written that we need to integrate into our project so we can communicate with their backend server. And they've written all the code for us to do that. We just get to implement it as a dependency or download all of the code that they have written into our Xcode project so that we can use it and more easily communicate with our Firebase backend. So we're gonna add this as a Swift package. So guys, just go ahead and copy and paste this line of code here. Go back to Xcode go to file, go to add package dependencies. And if you've added this before, you will see Firebase iOS SDK right there. But if not, just go ahead and in the upper right hand corner, paste that URL in there and it should find that um, GitHub repository and we're just gonna say add package. So it's gonna do its thing really quickly here and download all of that code that we need to use to interact with the Firebase server. So you guys could imagine it would be a huge nightmare if we had to write our own code to do that, right? And we would have to implement all this like networking code and security code and all of this like nightmarish stuff. So Google wrote that stuff for us and we can now download it as a package into our project just by saying add package. And you guys are gonna see all of those beautiful packages here show up pretty instantly, which is awesome. And now we have access to that code so that we can use it to communicate with our Firebase server. So let's go ahead and hit next. And this is how we need to modify our app file to configure Firebase or set it up client side in our code, guys. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is import Firebase core. So let's go ahead and copy that, go to our app file and right underneath import Swift UI, just hit command V to paste that or just paste it in there. And let's just go through with the rest of the stuff that we need. So guys, we have to implement this app delegate file or you know class as well. I'm not really gonna dive too deep into what this is. Let's just go ahead and copy it and paste it. So do that above main and in and below your imports right here. Okay, so that should be good. And there's one more thing we need to implement. We need to register the app delegate for Firebase setup. So guys, go ahead and copy that line of code right there and go ahead in your app struct and go ahead and paste that in. Okay, so basically just to do a quick rundown of what that does, guys, this function here uh, gets called when your app finishes launching. So if you guys have ever been like launched an app like Instagram or TikTok, you'll notice it stays on the launch screen for a little bit and then it launches the app, right? So this function, it gets called when our app finishes launching. So that's where we call this Firebase app dot configure line of code. So this goes into the code that we downloaded as a Swift package. This is something that Google has written and it's gonna just configure the Firebase app so that we can set it up to work with um, our code and link it to, you know, and be able to communicate with Firebase. So that's looking good. Let's go ahead and hit next and continue to console. All right, guys, so we are almost done. There's just a couple more setup steps that we need to add here. So everything should be good to go on the Xcode side of things right now. So to make sure, let's just go ahead and hit Command R or you know, run, to run our project, make sure our build succeeds and make sure that our project successfully launches and doesn't crash, right? So it is looking good so far. Yep. All right, guys, we're good to go, right? So we successfully set up an integrated Firebase into our Xcode project. So everything is good client side. But now we need to set up some more stuff on the server side of things. So when I say client side, guys, I mean everything that deals with Xcode and the device itself. When I say server side, I mean everything that is involved with Firebase. So guys, in this build folder, the first thing we're gonna set up is authentication. So this is a full like authentication suite that we get from Firebase where we can authenticate and manage users from a variety of prior, uh, providers without server side code. So this is one of my favorite features about Firebase. They give you this full authentication suite and it saves you so much time and effort and money if you're paying to develop an app um, when you're looking to just authenticate users. And we have all these different providers, Google, Facebook, GitHub, Yahoo, Twitter, Apple, phone, all that stuff, right? So we're just gonna do email and password for now. And just check that one, but you don't need to check the one at the bottom. So this just allows users to sign up with an email and a password. Um, there's a bunch of other ones that you guys could add like Google and all that stuff that we just saw, but we're just gonna be doing email and password for this app. 
Okay, next up guys, that's our user authentication. So that's how we're gonna create users, log them in, log them out, all that stuff. That registers an account with our backend server. Next up, we're gonna set up our Firestore database. So this is where we're actually gonna store user information. So really quickly, I just wanna give, uh, give you guys like a snapshot of what that looks like. I'm gonna go to my completed project and go to my database so you can see the type of information that gets stored in there. So I'm just gonna click on this posts collection and here guys, we can see that this is where all of my post information gets stored. So like when a user uploads a post, it sends all that data up to our cloud backend server and stores all that data there. And then any user in the app is going to fetch or pull information from here to ultimately display the information on their phone. We can see here that this post is what we're looking at right here in our database. So this is what the information is gonna look like in our backend. So we're gonna go over how to set that up now. So let's go back to our project, TikTok tutorial, go to Firestore database, and we are just going to say create database. And I'm gonna select Northern Virginia as my location. Guys, just go ahead and select the location that's closest to you, and then let's hit next. And you can start in production or test mode. I recommend starting in test mode. It makes things a little bit easier to communicate with your database. But if you guys ever do move to production, you can add some custom rules to who's allowed to interact with your data, right? Like you might not want anybody to be able to upload information to your database. They could attack your cloud server and may potentially uh, you know, retrieve user data and sensitive information. So anytime you are gonna be using an app in production, I highly recommend going to production mode, but just for testing, like we're doing here, we can start in test mode. Um, let's hit enable. And something interesting about test mode, guys, is it has a timestamp like expiration date. So a lot of times if you go back to your app like a month later, you'll notice that information isn't, you know, pulling down from the database. And that's because in the rules section here, they add a timestamp expiration date for when you can access the database and interact with it. I typically just like go ahead and say like, you know, let's just make it like 2025 or something. Um, when I'm testing an app, just so I don't have to worry about that stuff. But that is something to look out for. So guys, now we have a database set up, which is awesome. There's only one more thing for us to do, and that is to set up Firebase storage. So let's go back to this build right here, and let's go to this storage section, and let's take a look at what this is about. So this stores and retrieves user-generated files like images, audio, and video without server-side code. So once again, this is an out-of-the-box API that we can use to store large files like videos, like we're doing in this TikTok, TikTok app here, or pictures and stuff like that. Typically, guys, with in the backend world, you don't wanna store large files in your database here. You wanna do that in something like a storage bucket, and then the database is just gonna contain a pointer or a path to that file. So when you wanna store large files like audio, video, or pictures, you need to have a separate storage bucket. So let's go ahead and hit get started. Once again, just start in test mode, hit next, and we're just gonna hit done here for our storage location. And then we are gonna go and check out the rules for our storage bucket as well, guys. You gotta make sure that you don't have that nasty expiration date in there and then randomly you'll be trying to test your app and things just aren't working um, that's something i see happen all the time so just want to clear that up okay so we have our storage bucket set up now so it's ready to go with adding files and if you guys go to the rules section you'll notice you got that expiration date there as well just go ahead and change it to something like 2025 or you know a couple years down the line so you don't really got to worry about it and we're good to go guys so that is everything that we need to do to add and set up a Firebase project uh, to hook into our Xcode app, right? So now we have the ability to upload information and download information from our backend server. We can also authenticate users, log them in, sign them out, register them, all of that good stuff. And that's a pretty simple and seamless process there. So in the next one, we are gonna be going over how we can actually start authenticating users in our application and all of that good stuff. So we'll see you guys there. Peace.